Hello. Good morning, sir. How are we doing? Oh, man, you gave me a big belly laugh. We were working on our <laughs> what we're going to do for the show. Aaron just dropping huge, like, big, big brain, meaning oh, of life type man. things on here. So we're going to have to, it's gonna, might be a long one. Might be a long all the one. good, all the good stuff happens in Trello. And this is, this is <laughs> going to be a good one for sure. All right. Well, I don't know. I moved my parents this week. This was my big, okay. this was my big weekend project. Um, Tell me. It was crazy, man. Moving your parents out of the house, they've been in for like 50 years. Mm -mm. It's like, I'm old. That means I'm old, right? Like, I'm old. They're older. Yep. But they, they got there. Stuff. They have stuff they that hasn't stuff. been touched in 30 years. Stuff. They got the stuff, stuff. Oh, boy, the stuff. I mean, they got just stuff that has to be thrown out. They have stuff to move. They have stuff that they want to move that shouldn't be moved. They have all kinds of stuff. And we have this whole interesting psychological study going on mm. too because like it's hard to kind of quickly describe this but basically my mom is like really kind of easy going she's not gonna like make waves and that kind of thing mm -hmm. and both me and my brother married women who are kind of the opposite like they're like type a they're in there they're like mm -hmm. throwing stuff they're moving stuff stuff's happening they're just making calls on things right and so it's like you have those two Tasmanian devils in there, like just making stuff happen. Kids running around. All the kids are big enough to be useful. So kids are hauling stuff. And it was a nice little family family event. Uh, but that yeah, was crazy, man. I don't know. So are they moving from house to house or house to like community? No. or? Yeah. So it's not like an official like over 55 community, but it is this like really nice. Uh, I mean, I guess they're technically apartments, but they look more like condos kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And um yeah, it's because that's a big part of it. it. Was it's like they're on one floor in this new place. They like they don't have to think about anything, right? Like the grass, the snow, yeah. the all this stuff. There's nothing they have to think about. Even like oh, we had the, the option dream. to rent the washer dryer from the place. We're like, yes, let's rent the washer dryer. Like just think about nothing. If anything breaks, you just call somebody. It just magically gets fixed. So. That was kind of the goal. I want, I want that. That's, that's I kind of what I want. <laughs> I, I was like, I want this that, is amazing. But also, I want it to be really nice, and I want everyone to leave me alone. So apartments isn't it. Uh, dorms isn't it. Although that was it at one point in life. Man, dorms were awesome. Dorms, yeah. But yeah, I want some sort of, I want some sort of, and maybe I need, I think what I need is to be rich enough to have a house manager. That's what I need. You need the house manager. Yeah, I we gotta have a house manager. manager. Or just, why don't they do houses like this? Like just have a community where it's full on houses, but it's managed like apartments. Like they'll do it. They handle everything. You don't want to think about anything, but it's a full, like in Disney, they have this whole housing thing in Disney, Florida. And I'm not sure if they go that far with it, but I, in my brain, they do. It's just like a wonderful, magical place where they manage everything for you. Yep. And you don't ever have to think about it. This, right? is, this is actually a terrible business idea that I've had, which is basically like uh, landlords for a house that you own. Basically like yeah. a, house, a house manager for rent, a part-time a part right. house manager. Mm -hmm. So anytime, anytime something, and this would kill with millennials and... Uh, oh, yeah zoomers and people that don't know how to do anything right basically like when something happens at the house you call your designated house manager and they figure it out yeah like they figure out the right plumber they figure out the right, right. electrician they've got they them figure already. out the pest guy exactly they yes. have people and then you know what the house manager bills you instead of trying to figure out how do I pay this rinky dink mom and pop that only right. accepts checks and is giving me grief because I want to pay with a credit card and he's going to take it to the van and write it down on a yep. piece of paper. Like <laughs> just, just give me an invoice in an app where I can say, great, that's awesome. Or give me like, Hey, when can the plumber come? And I'll give you a date and they figure out how to make that happen instead of yep. me having to do all that. That's a terrible business idea, but I want it. I want it. You know what's not could be not terrible about it though is that it kind of already exists in all these companies that do Airbnb management for you. I mean, it's basically that the exact true. same thing. So why aren't they just doing then? How what's the difference? If I'm managing this house for Airbnb or I'm managing this house for Bob, who cares? Like it doesn't matter. Like that is I got a good the plumbers. Point. I got the cleaning people. I got everything you need. I bill you every month some, you know, two hundred fifty bucks a month for the service plus obviously any 
fees you have to pay or whatever if there's somebody comes and does something yeah on, honestly Great. it could be it could be just like a like an affiliate thing or like a service like a service a finder's fee you know every time somebody books mm. a plumber or something through oh, you yeah, that's true you too. get you know you get 10 percent or whatever right. and you negotiate with your plumber but you still dip both sides yes yeah, so you can dip both sides give me yeah. an app where i can say i need a plumber to fix yes. my sink and you the house manager are on the hook for finding a good one getting them here on time and then making sure that they get paid. I don't care. You pay them whatever you want. If you tell me it's a hundred dollars and it. you pay them 10, that's your problem. That's not <laughs> that's my problem. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. I think it's uh, that's something that I want. And it's something that like a bunch of young idiots wouldn't, would totally do. I don't know how to I do, do anything. I'm not even that young. I, I do freaking, it. I hate finding a plumber or an AC guy for goodness yep. sakes. Are you kidding me? It takes so. decades. Like we have a group now that I feel pretty oh, good with. Well, maybe not the landscaper. He's just okay. But like, yeah, it's like you got to go through three or four different ones yep. until you find the ones that are good. And yeah, it's a whole disaster. So. Yep. It's a whole disaster. Anyway, that was my, that was my weekend. You have any uh, exciting weekends? stories for oh, us oh no 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 exciting weekend stories just <laughs> weekends are tough Surviving. man yeah. weekends are tough um so our au pair is off every weekend um mm. and so we have all four we have all four um just you know to ourselves all weekend and it's just a lot it's, it's just a lot of like what are we gonna do for the next right. 48 hours because <laughs> you know they're people occupied. they're three and 10 months old and it's like yeah can't I can't just take the three year olds to the hardware store and then come home and do projects, right? They're not right. they're not interested in that. Um, yeah. So it's just a question of like, how do we entertain these humans for an entire weekend? And then it's it's tough. But the the, the hardware store for three year olds is the uh, toy department at Target. That's yeah, the hardware store. We en we ended up going to uh, so Saturday we went to I always take them to breakfast I take the older kids to breakfast every Saturday mm, right. which is very fun nice. that's very cute um, we went to breakfast and then we went to the Y because they have free childcare and so I was gonna take them straight to the bookstore but on the way to the bookstore I found out it didn't open till ten so I took them to mm. the Y they they got to play with their friends for a little bit I did a little nice little walk and listened to some podcasts for a little bit and then I took them to Barnes and Noble right when it opened oh uh, yeah Barnes read and a Nobles. bunch of books and played with the little train setup they have and oh, man I remember it doing was that. great it was yeah. fun it was so fun. Was fun so I was happy with that um because I got to spend you know I got to spend a lot of time with the older two just without you know fighting for attention from the younger two which is nice so yeah but it's man, kind it's of tough tough i love a monday morning love a monday morning <laughs> yeah. here with my coffee talking to you this is great out of the house yeah we had a similar our oldest you know freshman in college and uh my wife's birthday is today happy birthday oh, happy here. birthday jamie but me and my oldest have been planning this uh subversion where he was gonna surprise visit home and he mm -hmm. actually has off for like a long weekend here and my wife's like, oh, he's not coming home, it seems like. And so there's this whole ordeal where, we're, like, I've been having to lie incessantly about why he's not coming home and if he should come home or should we ask him and all this stuff. And then he just, I made it happen where he just appeared here and it was fabulous. And everybody was happy and there were tears. Good for you. It was great. Yeah, it was just, oh, man. Tuesday and the Wednesday night, Jamie was in the hospital with, like, this yeah. crazy migraine. What the heck? <laughs> like, you were like, hey, migraine. Jamie's in the hospital. She's fine. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what? Then why is she in the hospital? Dude, this week, every week this year, 2024, man, I need it to be over. Every week is just like, boom, just thing after thing after thing. Yeah, she was in the hospital. She called me. She couldn't have this like, was like kind of like almost confused and like wasn't uh -oh. feeling well. Get her to the hospital. They do all the tests. Everything's fine. They're like, okay, it's just like this complex migraine give her some cocktail of drugs or whatever, but she'd never had this before. So it was like kind of a first time thing. So it's like, yeah, you got that fear. And then you're like, okay, it's fine. But yeah, American healthcare system is all crazy, mm. right? Where it's like, uh, okay, so they want to do an MRI, even though they think, you know, it's fine. They're just like, you know, you're here. Let's do MRI. Just to make sure it's nothing crazy. Right. And they're like, okay, but you're going to have to spend the night if we do the MRI. Cause like it has to be tomorrow. There's no room tonight. But so she's like, well, I spent the night, she's kind of feeling better. And they're like, okay, but the thing is, if you don't do it, if you don't spend the night, then if you go out and have to like, then go to the doctor and then schedule the MRI and do all that outside, it's going to be like two months. 
So it's like, well, I guess we'll spend the what? night because otherwise it's two months and then that seems not ideal. So she spent the night and got breakfast in bed and did the MRI and it was all fine. For the but... low, low price of $40,000, she got breakfast <laughs> <Yeah>. in bed. <laughs> That's why you got to have insurance. I know there's people out there without insurance. Oh, insurance. Dude. Get Adam the insurance. Elmore, if you're listening, you're insane. You got to get insurance, God, man. What are you no doing? Insurance. Yeah, with one night in the hospital where they do an MRI, you're literally out tens it's and over. tens of thousands yep. of dollars. Like, got to have the insurance. So, got to yeah, have so the insurance. 400 bucks, it cost us whatever, not hey. the end of the world. So, yeah, it's less than a hotel. That's nice. Yeah, it's not bad. So, anyway, that, all right, that's my week. It's, yeah, it was crazy. It's a crazy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm, I look forward to the Monday morning, too. It's like we get on the pod, we do it. Um, all right. What about the product you're building? Let's talk yes. about that. People emailed in with guesses. Physical product. So give us give us some Physical guesses. Product. I'm curious. Yes. I'm curious what people guessed. All right. So we got like seven guesses here. Some okay. Stuff. We have desktop plant holder. We have two votes for drink coasters. Mm. We have. Well, I've kind of made up the name of this one. We have two votes for calendar but with a murder spike which is mm. you know your little receipt mm -hmm, spiky mm -hmm, thing you mm -hmm. use uh pen holder mm -hmm. a cup abstract art which i'm kind of mm. thinking that'd be cool um and Done a that. mic stand so Ooh. yeah so okay I know what you um, think about those those are all very good guesses okay um and they most of them are directionally correct Okay, interesting. So we're narrow we're narrowing in on uh yeah, we're narrowing in on like a a feeling or an idea. Right. Kind and I think I think the, the feeling that is being uh, captured here is some sort of like uh desk ornament. Not quite ornament, but like desk accessory yeah. perhaps. Right. Um and that is that is in the right universe. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Stuff's happening. One of I will say of those six or seven. One of them is very close. One of them is very, very close. Close enough to win the prize or not close enough to win the prize? Um, I'll let you decide that when it's revealed. Okay. I think, I, think we could, I think we could give him an attaboy, but I'll, okay. let, you, I'll let you decide that. Um, All right. In, in my DMs, I got two correct, spot-on, 100% well, then, guesses. Prizes have been won. There you go. Yep. If so we got. On, uh, yes. I I want to get his name right because he's he's branded himself with a personal brand Ooh. here. It's Ooh. uh Mitch the Elixir Tools guy. Okay. So friend Hello, friend Mitch. of the pod, friend of yes. mine, Mitch the Elixir Tool guys. All right. And then then we got we got a call from inside the house, Laravel Holdings Inc. Joe Tannenbaum. Oh. Got a got a one hundred percent guess. Wow. So Mitch and Joe, Mitch and Joe got it. Jason Beggs came in the DMs begging, and I told him what it was, but he didn't even get close. He's just okay. He didn't even try. I was like, "Come on, Jason, unbelievable!" But I told him. Um, yeah, so we got so, we got a few winners. Congratulations to the winners. Very good. Apparently, they know you pretty well. They've they've heard well, they've you been, enough times. They've been paying attention. Yes, that's all. Yeah, that's all I will say. It has, uh, oh, in my opinion, become clear. But they, they, they agree. But apparently, not everyone agrees. So there you go. So you have not um, started production. Correct. I have not started okay. production. I have received um, some sample materials, um, and so Postgres launches tomorrow. We'll probably f spend the rest of the week ironing stuff out, and then. We will do. I'll start doing production shortly thereafter. It might be, it might be into November. Um, yeah. You know, I have my big uh, no more kids surgery early, early November. Mm. So it might be shortly after that I start the I start the party. Yep. Yeah, that would be good. You're gonna need a recovery period after that so you can just kind of hang out, putz exactly. around the house. Oh, and I'm going to freaking uh, San Francisco for like a next JS pre party conference okay the most absurd thing that aaron <laughs> francis could ever be a part of well um, how'd this come about what's going on here so you know jason langsdorf uh no. guy on the internet so he does okay. this show uh he does this youtube show it's like web dev challenge where he gets josh siri was just on one um 
where he gets a bunch of, not a bunch, he gets, I think, three or four web developers from different ecosystems, comes up to port, they all come up to Portland into his studio, mm. and they do like a YouTube video. You build, they all build the same idea over four hours. Um, oh, interesting. Yeah, neat idea. Very, very cool show. Um, and he invited me to come to one. And the one that I was able to come to after lots of like trying to make it work was this one that's after Postgres. And I was like, great, let's go to Portland. Sounds fun. And so then he emailed me shortly thereafter and was like, hey, uh, turns out we're going to do it in San Francisco and it's going to be a Sanity IO uh, event, which, mm. uh, oh, you weren't at Laracon. Um, Kapehe, who spoke at Laracon. Okay is a sanity io team member and so she'll be there as well um and so moved it to san francisco and it's a san like live sanity hackathon that also mm. doubles as like a pre-party for next jf next js conf and so oh, <laughs> i'm gonna be like i'm gonna be like fish out of water for sure That's i'm gonna be crazy. a sheep in wolves clothing trying to walk in there um but i think kent c dodds will be there as well um and then a bunch of friends of course will be at the the event but i think kent is participating in the challenge as well so are you Postgres going to the conference this week no are you kidding okay. no way <laughs> postgres launches and then next week i'm in san francisco for for that so i know and crazy so you're just going for a couple days or you do how, yeah. how long are you going no just for i go like i think i arrive tuesday afternoon the thing is on wednesday and i i leave thursday morning okay so in and out again yeah. go to tartine go to tartine get it. i love tartine man I don't know what Tartine is. Oh, it's like the best bakery in the world. It's like, um, they do like sandwiches. You know, it's like a modern bakery where there's like sandwiches. And I actually smuggled home a gigantic sourdough loaf for my wife uh, when I went to San Francisco in like 2000. Is that, is that Ill illegal? Did, I don't think so. But I think it's a weird look. just felt more fun to smuggle. Yeah, you know, the security was oh, a little nothing. like. nothing. I don't know. Just <laughs> a don't towel know. rolled up. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, uh, it's, it's legal to take bread on an airplane. <laughs> yeah, it's a huge bread, though. It's a giant bread. Because, you know, they make those really big ones. It's like, ah, huge bread. Yeah, Look I'll check it out. out. So I'll check out Tartine, and when I go to New York City, Los Tacos number one. Tacos. I, I'm telling you, we have up their business, this podcast, because I've gotten like 10 people. Taylor tweeted he went there. Everybody went there after the show. Everybody knows now about Los Tacos number one. you got to go there. It's so good. Um, i got to get back down there. I was just talking to my daughter about this. We need, it. We need tacos, and the only place to get good tacos is New York City. Los so Tacos. Go down there. Yeah, we got to make the run. Um, all right, so that's your product update. Now you got something else on here. I don't even know what this is. It sounds like yet another new initiative. What's going on here? What's it called? It's called Try Hard Factory. Oh, that's such a good name. <laughs> oh, we love the name. We love a name. Here's, here's the thing. Name. Here's mm. the thing. I'm in the studio of Light and Sound right now. Yes, of course. You are. Which is, in fact, an apartment. Um, right. When I, built the, when I built out the studio, I was very cautious and purposeful to be friendly and folksy with uh, apartment management, right? Mm -hmm. You know, give them the old, hey, how's your father? How we doing? Hey, come on, what's going right. on? Uh, glad handing. Yeah, a little bit. Um, and so to the extent that the apartment manager and like the property manager, whatever, whatever's one above him, um, or maybe he's leasing manager and she's apartment manager or something like that. They both came in here and looked at the studio and were like, this is awesome. Way to go. How well, fun. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So like, I feel like I was on the up and up. Uh, nope. Both of those people have now left. Ooh. Neither of them work at the apartment anymore. Okay. And so now I feel like I'm flying under the radar a little bit. Like, but there's nothing uh, you've done anything though. It's all well, removable stuff. I know, I know, I know. It's all movable. There's no nails in the wall. All yeah. of that's true. I'm just afraid. You know how some how some uh, some people some middle managers can see a thing that is out of the ordinary and say, this is illegal. Like you can't do that. Right. Like, yeah. ah, I didn't fit into my box. She says, you can't do that. Right. Building a wall in front of some windows <laughs> might <laughs> fall in into that category. It, it little, just might. A little mass so, shooter ish. Maybe like, you got a little what's bit. going on? What's going I'm, on behind more, that I'm more wall? Thinking, more thinking a little fire hazard ish, but yeah, you know, mass shooter, be, whatever. E 50, 50. Um, a little fire escape issue there. Potentially. Yeah. So, um, so my fear is, you know, they they sent an email a couple of weeks ago. It was like, hey, we're gonna come inspect the fire sprinkler heads, and I'm like, this mm. is it, game over for old Aaron. Oh shit! Um, 
and either they never came or they came and were like, what the hell is going on in here? Sprinklers look good, <laughs> it's though. So and then perfect. They Maybe they don't even know there's a window <laughs> there. They're Maybe like, they oh, yeah. This fun. is the one unit in the whole <laughs> complex that where the bedroom has uh, no windows. Um, so that's got me a little bit. That's got me a little bit on edge. Like, what's mm-hmm. going to happen? Are they going to come in here and be like, tear this wall down? And I'm going to have to say no right. you know they're gonna hit me with a reagan is it reagan that said tear down this wall <laughs> yeah, yeah, i think it was yeah yeah so they're gonna hit me with the mr gorbachev <laughs> dude you yeah. gotta have you gotta live stream like when they're there i need you live streaming the whole thing it's like a mad guy with like a bad part and he's like uh-huh. you gotta tear down this wall and you're like i'm not tearing down the wall i think how you're like you're like the russians in this example you're, like, you're, you're the east germans you're like i'm not tearing down yeah. this wall man. yeah bad news you never want to so you never want to be the east Germans. so i'm getting scared <laughs> yeah. i'm getting scared the the lease is coming up i think wow, like already january or february something like mm. that yeah and i barely remember when i got the lease because when i got the lease i was still working at a company which we shall not name Right. I was on paternity leave. I had just gotten rheumatoid arthritis. I wasn't sleeping at all. That's right. I had a million kids. Two of them were brand new babies. And so it's all kind of a blur. And then I got fired. You thought fired. you were doing this for that company. I they thought I was doing for this it for, for the point. company. Like, and they were paying for it. <laughs> Talk about uh, the ultimate bamboozle. This is sure, like a, the- sure. Sign a lease, big guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man you gotta get it's like this is the bad vibes of your old ex you know you gotta you can't hold on to that apartment you shared together anymore you gotta you gotta move out and move on to something bigger and better better. just to show them so okay so here's here's the thought here's the thought Mm -hmm. if i'm gonna do this this physical product light manufacturing which sure Sure. I don't think we should plan for, but okay, continue. We're holding as a constant. We're holding sure, that as a constant yeah. for if the purposes of this, building that for mm-hmm. for the purposes of this discussion. Um, yeah, which leads us nicely into the next Trello card, which we'll get to. But for the purposes of this discussion, yes. If I'm if I'm doing a little, uh, just a little bit of light manufacturing as a treat, yeah. right? Right. I need some space. I need no, some more true. space. I can't that's be doing it in here. True. I've kind of pushed the the bounds of the power tools I can run in this apartment. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, that was back under friendly management was when I was running power tools. Right. I, I, mm-hmm. I dare not run them anymore. And so I started thinking, okay, so light manufacturing is one. Also, um, different backdrops, different uh, recording locations is the yep. other. Mm-hmm. Because if we had had our Druthers, high performance SQLite and Postgres would be kind of in different sets a little right. bit. Right, yeah. Um, and now when we're talking about uh, picking screencasting back up, I don't want, I, we want it on a different, kind of on a different background. Um, mm. And so that's just not possible in this location, but where it is possible is a little bit of a warehouse, a little bit of a, uh, speaking of light <sighs> maybe industrial, maybe a factory perhaps, maybe a factory with a big roll up <laughs> door, some 20 foot oh ceilings, giant cavern. What so have then, you done? Yeah, it just keeps going. It's just getting bigger and bigger. So then uh-huh. uh, we can build, you know, backdrops that are kind of like that are false walls of themselves, right. but also on wheels. And so we can just mm. like whoop, roll one out, That'd roll cool. one back. Yeah. Um, put put a few put a few drill presses, table saw, you know, table tabletop router, some stuff in there for the manufacturing. Yeah. Got all these different sets. Just have a ton of space, and nobody's you know nobody's breathing down my neck because. You know, next door they're you know running a car auto body shop and whatever. So it's like, who cares? (laughs) So that's the that's the thought right now. I don't know if we'll do it this year or next, but Mm. we will get we will get some new space. And I think the next space we get will be uh, industrial flex, which will hopefully be primarily like warehouse with a roll up door and maybe Mm. like an office up front where we could do stuff. But you know i would need i would need a bathroom and i would need potentially like just a sink and a fridge so we'd have to figure that out too so right that would be the try hard factory which sounds awesome <laughs> it does sound awesome have you actually looked at places i have well okay. not not um physically i've looked on loopnet which is like okay. commercial yeah. space website and what's the cost for these so the cost from what I've seen, and I just got the name of a proper, you know, commercial realtor from my residential realtor, the cost I've seen generally so far is $10 a square foot a year. So oh. if we did, 
10 times, we'll say, let's go big. Let's say 2,500 square feet mm. uh, divided by 12 months. That's $2,080 a month. Okay. That's not too bad. The apartment's like 14, 1500. Yeah. You have a pool at the apartment, but yeah. Have a pool and a gym and a kitchen and a bathroom. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely yeah. need a bathroom. You it's not just an it's not just an empty <clears throat> warehouse. But I don't I don't know if here's the thing. I don't know anything about commercial real estate, but you can just tell them like, "Hey, I need some tenant improvements, right?" Can't you just be like, "Hey, Sometimes. why don't you give me a bunch of money for for build out or something in an office definitely i don't know about if you go really industrial oh, yeah, i don't know if that's the same thing but presumably you could point. do whatever you want if you're willing to pay for it and they're okay mm -hmm. with it whatever then you're but you're, I mean, you're improving something that somebody else owns somebody else and owns all that. and probably um, if you're getting if you're getting uh tenant improvement money you're probably committing to like five years aren't you right a lot of times yes five years is a pretty standard commercial lease um but I mean, I don't. I, I don't know. I would think you'd be able to get less, but maybe three years or something like that, or maybe pay three. a bunch and do one year, right? Uh, we should do three because like three years hmm. from now we're gonna need even more space. We're gonna it's, we're <laughs> we're gonna go full sets, on thirty sets. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we're gonna go full on twenty thousand square foot warehouse in a couple Have years. You found any in not sleazy parts of town and so that's the pretty tough close part. to you? There are some that are pretty close to me, okay. um, but it is in. It is in like the the crook of two highways, you know, because it's mm -hmm. like you need to get yeah. access to the highway because you're a shipping company. And you're like, well, or I'm a YouTuber. Um, right. So <laughs> they're they are kind of in like industrial office parks. I wouldn't say they're sleazy, but they're uninspired. Like you right. just drive around and it's just big warehouse, little warehouse, over and over and over again. There are some that are in a pretty cool little part of town and were recently built. Mm -hmm. Um. But I don't know what those cost, and so I would need yeah. to get I would need to get the agent over there to help me figure it out. I've also seen um, <clears throat> this is like I didn't name it this, so I shouldn't feel embarrassed. But like man caves for rent, mm. where you can like basically from their website, it just shows like you know Porsches and motorcycles parked in this little garage, and then there's a loft mm. above it where you can watch football. And I'm like, eh, I don't <laughs> want to do any of that, but Texas maybe I could do some insane. videos there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It truly, uh, it truly is like this guy bought, um, it's like a franchise now. I think, I think the guy mm. bought like storage land or oh, units right. yeah. and now they're, they're double height. They're super tall and they are sold as, uh, right. like man, man garages. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's so embarrassing. All right. Well, what about, I think you've gone all the way to the far edge as you are wont to do sometimes, what? but this is could the first we, I'm hearing could that. We, could we bring it back maybe a little bit? <laughs> What about just regular, not maybe totally regular, but fairly regular office space? Mm. You because lost you're me not... at regular and you lost <laughs> me at office space. Well, it could be cool. See, I think office space would give you the opportunity for maybe cooler space in more interesting areas. True, true, uh, true. People, they're like the demand for, I don't think the demand for like raw commercial industrial space is as down as the demand for office space. So I think you probably get a better deal. Yep, and you're not actually manufacturing anything. So it's little, well, like you know, once in a while, a couple times a well, year, you might run a drill. Like that's not you don't necessarily need like you know a floor oh, drain. That's interesting. For that. Like you that's can interesting. run the drill in this office space once a month. It's fine, and most of the time, it's YouTube production studio space, and that's great. Uh -huh, so uh -huh, uh -huh. you might want to consider that. That's interesting. Yeah. Um. Because you're not going to park a portion there. You're not going to not have oil and grease and things. So even what you're talking about manufacturing, at least if it's similar to what you've already talked about, I think, mm -hmm. it's not heavy, right? It's like it's not some heavy, sawdust. No. Some, some sawdust. You know, it's not like... So I've run, I've run some light manufacturing out of an office before. Okay. The problem is uh, we were on the seventh floor. This is where I built the robots. Mm -hmm. We were on the mm -hmm. seventh floor. And like I just dropped that. <laughs> where I built the robots. Okay, continue, Elon. Oh, if I if I have a penchant for Ooh. anything, it's going too far. So this yeah. is where we built the robots on the seventh yeah. floor. The problem we ran into one was getting materials up there was a pain, right? Sure. So getting sheets of plywood <laughs> through the office yes. lobby up without oh no, it's nothing. Don't worry about it, sir. <laughs> That's kind of manufacturing. Yeah. The other thing that uh, ended up 
being the reason we moved out of there was mm. running the laser cutter mm. in the office with windows that don't open. And uh. so what we ended up doing was we vented it through a makeshift uh a makeshift carbon yeah, filter. HEPA filter, yeah. And then blew it out into the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, okay. And there sure. were there were actually days when um <clears throat> Co-workers would like come back from lunch and be like, hey man, uh the elevators all smell like like laser burnings from all this. Because it'll like go into the hallway and then go into the elevators and go down to the lobby and right, just people get in the elevators. And, yeah. So then then we had some security guards come up and be like, Hey, is uh, uh you guys cooking up here? And I said, We are not cooking anything, sir. <laughs> We're cooking, that baby. is We're true. Cooking. That is true. <laughs> So uh, that, that's my what, fear is like, what if I get, what if I get, what if I need to start doing laser cutting, which I probably will. Well, I let me to. reframe this a little bit. Okay. Reframe. I was, what I was actually, I've, I said office space, but really what I was thinking is really Tell more me. like retail space. So oh, first floor, storefront, 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 big panes of glass, doors, a back door, a front door, like a cool logo oh, I, on the glass. I would kill for that. Try I would hard. Kill for that factory yeah. with a little icon logo thing and like yeah i think oh, that'd be I, amazing i mean there's there there the retail real estate is bad right now so like i think you could probably find something like that maybe in a cool part of town that used to be like the old main street but now maybe i could like, do it in Bellum, where Le- oh, you didn't you didn't come to laricon where laricon oh. was <laughs> yes there you go something that's like so that. hip down there yeah, you want to be somewhere hip. You don't want to. I do. Be I want to get guy tattoos. Chopping up stolen Lexuses, man. That's no. just not going to be for you. But if I am next to that guy, you better believe I'm bringing them beer on the first day and being like, "Hey, I'm your new neighbor. We're friends. We're cool. Don't worry the, about he'll it." He'll be on the pod too. I want him on the pod. Oh, for sure. I'll meet the most interesting people if I do light industrial. But maybe you're right. Maybe there's like a. Maybe there's like a. I'm thinking like a empty strip mall almost but in a cooler yeah. in a cooler little spot i mean ideally like a main street but maybe in texas they don't have those things they're all like ghost towns now so now you gotta like just well, go to strip mall but it's a strip mall it's like in texas all the poker places are in strip malls because that's like yeah. what you have a lot of that are empty so they just take over like half a strip mall it's a big huge poker place yeah it, it yeah, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Hard factory it could be a half of a strip mall somewhere that's the thing oh, you can maybe expand like Maybe that's a great idea. One storefront, but if you actually get into manufacturing more stuff, or you have other people working there with you, you could take the one next to it over, or whatever. And then, and then, this is good because then I could, you know, vent stuff out the back door instead yeah. of being stuck on the seventh floor. Yeah, you don't want to be on the seventh floor. You definitely don't want to be. On, I, I don't even like that in general. Like even in our like little office space, we are on the first floor. I can walk right out the door. I can walk down the street. Right. Now you'd be able to get out. You don't want to be trapped elevator distance away. So, no, yeah. no, no elevator for sure. Interesting. Okay. Okay. I like it. That's worth the price of admission right here. There I like go. that. And when you All do right, events, so... like how cool would that be? Like, ah, oh, that would you, be cool. You know, you have people at the factory and you could walk down the street to the bar and hang out. And that'd be know. cool. Okay. Shoot. All I right. like that idea. Done. Okay. So, I'm going to look for uh, either. Retail space storefront. I'm just afraid that's going to be terribly expensive, but I could be wrong. I was wrong one time before. I could be wrong again. Um, or light industrial. Yeah, I would keep your keep your mind open. I'll the retail might open. be a little more expensive, but they are kind of hurting. I mean, it's like Walmart and Target have taken over everything. Like, there's right, you know, right, these right, storefronts right, right. are empty. You see a lot of different types of things go in them now. And way back in the dot com era, I worked in a startup that was in a storefront, and that was even back then. And it's like it was cool. It was awesome. Like you walk down the street, you get coffee, you get food. It's like you walk back to the office. It's great. You're like right there. You don't have to drive everywhere and all that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. I will. I'll still drive everywhere, but it'll be a closer it's drive. Texas, so yeah. It's different. yeah. <laughs> no, all right, you gotta you drive. Walking? Come on. <laughs> what, am I an insane person? I'm not gonna walk. Uh, uh, all right. Okay. Yeah. I like it. So let's transition to your next one. This is going to take a little time. You just wrote on the card, what do I want to do with my life? So it's a big one. It's a big was one. That the, that's the one that got you, huh? It was a big belly laugh when I saw that. And it's because we're, we're on video and you're just typing the card out and the card pops up. What, I thought you're writing like something normal, like what I ate last week or the cool thing we did with the kids. You're like, what do I want to do with my life? 
yeah more intense than i was expecting to pop up on the trello card so well you know what's the we epiphany have, you we, had did something happen a little bit and no okay. yes and no mm. but we have mm, we, okay. we have these thoughts right so mm. here's 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 where i'm at um so we do the way we make money right now is we make courses right right um that's fine i like it i enjoy teaching i think i'm good at it i enjoy studying i like that part it is it is of course a little bit stressful to like get it all done but i think anything worth doing is a little bit stressful so i'm not really i don't really uh mind that so much but i don't want to do that forever right like <clears throat> let me rephrase i don't want to do only that forever mm. because if in 10 years i still do a course or two i'm happy but what I don't want to do is between now and 10 years from now, only produce courses, right? Mm -hmm. So there's this tension between like, where do we currently make money, which is courses, and that's great. Right. Mm -hmm. um, what do I want to do? What do people tell me that I should be doing? Mm -hmm. And what makes what makes money? And like, what is fun? And so right. some things I'm thinking about are... Um, like I mentioned on the last episode, November and December are going to be optimizing for fun, right? right? Optimizing for exploration, interest, and maybe this is another thing, exploration versus exploitation, right? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of been my successful uh, formula my whole life is explore, find something that works, exploit, and then explore, find something that works, exploit. And so I do like, I do like that as a cycle. Mm -hmm. Um I think part of part of like the uh, dissonance is, for example, when I say like, oh, I'm going to do physical manufacturing, everybody's like, why do physical products make <laughs> more courses? <laughs> and in my head, I'm like, I don't want to be course guy. Yeah. Like, I don't I don't want to just do that. Mm -hmm. And I think some people some people are saying like, you can make more money if you just made more courses. And mm -hmm. I say that is correct. You are in fact you are in fact correct. Right. At least right now you are correct. Right. But how do we know? Here's a question. How do I know I'm not stuck at a local maximum? Right? Right. Mm -hmm. So if I if I continue to make courses, uh that would be a way to maximize money for now, but if I start exploring uh you know, physical product, lifestyle, brand, maker, like what if I became the next Ugg Monk, which is a big physical product guy, right? Mm. That would be, I could make more money doing that. So mm. that's one of the questions. And then the other question is like, um, <clears throat> I, I see a lot of people that just aren't happy. A lot yep. of people have these great businesses and they're just not happy. Mm. I'm like, hmm, do I want to do that? Because I don't think I want to do that. Like if I made right. a SQL Server course and then a, a Maria and then a MySQL and then a Redis and then a DuckDB and a ClickHouse would be like, I could make a ton of money, but would I just be miserable? No. And so I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to untangle uh, what do I want to do? Am I okay with people telling me that I'm doing something stupid and or mm. like suboptimal? Right. And how do, how do Steve and I turn this like, business into a going concern, you know, to borrow yeah. some shared language that you and I share from accounting, how can we make right. it a going concern? <laughs> so that's where it all comes from. And and the mm. factory is part of that because I think, oh, if we got the factory, then <clears throat> we could transition the YouTube channel from strictly programming content to more like business maker, behind the scenes, plus programming, plus builder, like all of this cool stuff that seems mm. a little bit broader, right? Mm -hmm. um and would be a lot of fun so what am i gonna do ian man i don't know <laughs> i think uh <laughs> it's a, i mean these are all fair questions right i think obviously people are gonna tell you to like just do the thing you're doing that's always the default especially when it seems like it's working right uh, a lot depends on your goals but a lot of this also depends on like part of what you've done for your personal happiness and that you wanted to do was to have four children right yes and so that I do feel like you're going to get into the phase here soon where that's just a lot. Um, you're already to the phase where it's a what, lot. What do you mean there's soon? Like, you know, there's just like different trade-offs in there. And it's like, I kind of feel like I've had a very similar arc 
to you. I'm not okay. quite as much on the bouncing around on lots of different ideas necessarily, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's like I have my phase where I was building now help spot. We're building, I'm working crazy hard, million hours, whatever. All right, stuff. right, right. And then the kids, you have a kid, they have another kid, they have another kid, and it starts yeah. to get to where like just if I'm going to be involved with the kids, then there's going to have to be trade offs on like how much I could possibly work, right? Okay, so okay. that starts to happen. <clears throat> and then basically like. 13 years go by and then, mm. then where you then you're to now and you're like okay there's definitely stuff i could have done to make way more money in those years but i had to balance those things right of like well do i want to do like we did a huge trip to europe for four months and we went to disney awesome. twice and we did whatever we got we built a house and like all these other things that also i wanted to do along the way and so it's like do you want to just run a business that supports your life Mm-hmm. Or do you want the business to be the interesting thing in your life? And I think it's a little tricky to have your cake and eat it too at some point, especially with this number of kids, because there's a lot of expenses, there's a lot of stress, there's a lot of things that go with it. You want to have spend time with everybody, spend time with your wife, blah, blah. So I do think that's, to me, that's the thing that stands out to me is like, you know, because I, I think of like West Boss. Now I'm gonna make up a bunch of stuff about West Boss. I don't actually of course, know. Of course, he's, he's not here. Fact. Yeah, make right. it up. But my what my from the outside view of the little bit I know about Wes is that he seems to make a course a year. I would mm-hmm. say if mm-hmm. I mean, we average it out, like he's not making a course every three months. And between that, you know, he's streaming and he's doing some videos and. But he, I, I don't know what he does between them. Like he kind of just mm-hmm. does, you know, he's doing stuff, right? And yep, so, yep, yep he's like found a frequency where he could probably make more money if he did more courses yep but he's not doing more courses but he is doing a good job of selling the courses he already has and then i presume i'm I'm totally making stuff up is in the time he's not making these extra courses that would make him extra money he is doing stuff with his family or other things he enjoys right and so that's where like is there a balance there for you like should you be more like putting the business on like a more of a like schedule sort of not a schedule right but like a you're trying to get a baseline there and like mm-hmm. establish a healthy business and these other things become hobbies uh and you know what i mean like mm-hmm. that type of thing or do you want to say we want to do woodworking and i'm going all in on the woodworking but you're taking a huge risk obviously right you're gonna incur a bunch more expense for this a, a bigger production thing you're going to be mm-hmm. not working on courses kids are still gonna need you wife's still gonna need you all that stuff so i don't know that's like the balance in some ways like if you have a stable business it it lets you do more Mm -hmm. other things right because it's like if we got the business to where every year i know whatever your number is right like a reasonable number three hundred thousand five hundred thousand whatever and you have a partner which also makes it harder easier and harder right Mm -hmm. but it's now you have to make more money right for you both to feel like you're at the number you want to be at where it's like a solid nice living so um you know but if you were at that then it's like okay like if i want to go off and spend two months woodworking you could do that and it won't really matter and then you could come back and do something else or whatever um but they're more like hobbies if something really takes off you can always go into it more but i guess that yeah so i don't know my my concern is you're not to stable business yet and so without that it makes these other things much riskier versus mm-hmm. if you had this under your belt for like a couple of years and you were like a couple of years, like, Hey, we do a course a year or two courses a year and we do a good job. We figured out how to continue to market the old courses. Mm-hmm. Um, and now the revenue is recurring, whether it's literally recurring or it's just recurring in that, you know, how to market and sell it continuously so that you, you know, continuously are making money. Um, I don't know, but only you can answer that. It depends, of course, a lot on your how much money you have in the bank and all those kind of things. Obviously, if you have more, it's easier to take bigger risks, all that kind of stuff. I don't know. That's my thoughts. Okay. What, what, so, what thoughts. are you thinking about it? These, yeah. these are good thoughts. Um, okay, so thoughts. Uh, I think you're probably right about West Boss. He's not here to defend himself, so right. I think you're, I think you're probably right. Um, he is maybe a good. Uh, corollary because it does seem like he does a bunch of other stuff too you know like Mm -hmm. he's always on doing these crazy 
he did a receipt printer. He did an old VHS cam. He built out his basement studio. He's right. always doing, he's always doing stupid stuff. And I want to mm-hmm. do stupid stuff, right? right yeah. That's what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe that's good. Maybe that's good. Um, so yes, good, good analogy. Good example. Um, in terms of the stable business thing, um, a few years, that's forever. Ian, a few years from now is a hundred <laughs> years from mindset. now. I okay. do not, mm-hmm. we have, we must accelerate. I have to go faster. Um, okay. okay. So let's. What the hell? How does going off on an adventure to construct wooden things get you there faster? If you're trying to get to what, to where you have a big pile of money in the bank and you don't have to worry about it. Well, it doesn't get like me there. It doesn't adventure. get me to the big pile of money in the bank faster. Okay. It gets me All to right. doing, doing interesting and varied things faster. So if I'm if okay. I'm to if I'm to do courses for the next three or four years and then I can do interesting and varied things, that's a thousand years away, right? Mm. But yeah, let's let's say let's say for the sake of argument, mm. this is um this is within striking distance. Let's say that try hard makes five hundred thousand dollars a year. Okay. Is that enough to just like have a few uh, have a few explorations i mean that's a pretty that's pretty solid business for year one right yeah so if we do that if we pull that off Mm -hmm. and then uh one thing i will rebut is uh the characterization that i would go all in on manufacturing i think i'm not gonna probably go all in on almost anything which i think is part of the tension (laughs) right so And there's another there's another uh, angle there's another angle to this or, or another layer to this onion in that um, done right everything is content right? right and so this this whole experiment is like just do things that attract people and then eventually yeah. you know you'll make money off of it somehow <clears throat> yeah. and doing a factory, doing a limited run manufacturing, like all of that is just such great content. Um, and if that, if that part wasn't there, I would say, Ooh, I don't know if this makes sense as a whole, you know? So do you think though, I guess to me that is, those are kind of, I guess to me the, the rub there is when you say like, Oh, like doing courses two years from now. Right. Like to me, then if that, if that other stuff is content, which I totally agree with, mm-hmm. then the, the courses are the monetization of that content. It's the back end. That right? is the current back end. I agree. So that now I think you maybe maybe I could see you feeling burned out right now because you've kind of done these two you kind of came out the gate Huge maybe, mistake. Uh, too fast, right? Yep. And like yep. it's like these courses back to back, you're sick of courses, like good good for money, what, bad for morale. Yeah. Right. So then like if it's more planned now that you've kind of established how you do it, how long it takes, blah blah. blah like could it be that it's more like, hey. Now we're going to do course every January and every June or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Or you could even do eight months between them and it doesn't have to be within a year, right? We're going to do January yep, yep, and yep. August and then whatever. Every eight months we're going to do it. Then like it's like you have a structure there where it's like, yes, there's still going to be tons of time in between to go totally. off on side trips and make cool content. But then there's also already a plan for like we're going to come back then to the courses that right. feed the machine, right? And like that's what we're doing um verse like you know if you describe it kind of the initial way it sounds a little bit more like well i might not be want to do courses two years from now which is fine but then it's like now you have to reinvent a new business of some sort mm-hmm. to pay you guys two years from now right verse right if it's like at least the base plan is like we're going to make courses we're going to do things that feed into our you know uh marketing essentially, distribution that, empire distribution yeah our following all that stuff then that's t- you know, that's totally different. This is just like your marketing strategy again for the courses or whatever right. other stuff you decide to sell. Um, I think that makes sense, but it's just like more of a structured plan that you can then execute over and over versus the kind of having to like figure out what you're going to do every time, which seems okay. harder. Okay. I will, I will hit you with a yes. And I agree with all mm. of that. And perhaps I overstated the extent to which we would leave courses behind. So mm. um, I agree that uh courses right now are the back end so like all attention hopefully eventually funnels down into some portion of people buying courses um that that is currently the business model Mm. which seems great to me um i don't want to change that necessarily 
What I do want is, I think, like you're saying, spread the courses out a lot further. And in the meantime, do other interesting things that have a potential to become additional backends on the attention distribution empire, right? right. Mm-hmm. So let's say let's say that uh, I just finished Postgres. We can say that because it's true. So Woo! let's say that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Now it's like, great. You don't have to you don't have to make another course for eight months. Let's say let's say you're gonna do you're gonna release MySQL in eight months, which was not a promise, just a hypothetical. Right. Um, between now and eight months, I want to do some interesting stuff. Yeah, and I want I want to reap two benefits from the interesting stuff. Three, perhaps one is have fun. Yeah. Um, two would be make good content, which is like, I think a, a byproduct. And three would be potentially come up with a new a new uh, offering in the product mix. Right. No. So hopefully, ten years from now, hopefully ten years from now, I've got fifteen courses that print money. Maybe we do between one and 10 physical products. Maybe we have a piece of desktop software. Maybe we have a SaaS, something like that. I think that's the feeling that I get, which is like 10 years from now, regardless of what it is, I don't want to just have one thing. And in this case, that would be the one thing that I don't want to just have is courses. It could just be, you know, if we were doing SaaS, I would say, maybe I just don't want to run a single SaaS, which... You know, I don't want to run two sasses, but I I don't want to just have <laughs> one single thing. So I think like people push back against your thinking here is that like most successful businesses are fairly boring to operate. I agree. Um, that's kind of their nature. <clears throat> if it's not boring, it's often because things are going wrong or it's the very beginning when it's super exciting and you don't know if it's going to work. But once you I know agree. it works, um, it's pretty boring basically uh you know there's different levels to that like i don't necessarily think i feel bored all the time in the strongest sense of that word but Mm -hmm. at the same time sure it's not as definitely not exciting like i'm just starting a new project and it's you know who knows what's gonna happen right it's a different type of thing doesn't that sound fun right (laughs) yeah it does sound (laughs) fun but so that's the rub right it's like well then how do you uh i mean that's the other thing it's like there's the other forms of revenue generation that maybe lend themselves better to where you want to be if we're sticking with the like what do i do want to do in my life like in the big picture right like i would think just forgetting how realistic this is at this point like i would think advertising is a much better fit for what you are talking about like say say more advertising how because if you just want to have a big like if you're casey neistat you could do anything right like he had products then he sold them and he has, but most of his revenue, right, is like he does ads. Like that's where he's oh, traditionally oh, oh, made I most see. of his money, right? So like, yeah, you're out there creating stuff. Maybe you go this direction, maybe you go that direction, do this other thing. It's all content. And the base plan for how you monetize it is the traditional one, which is advertising. Which Sell ads. Is easy and not easy to do, right? But it's like fits naturally with yeah. a content business. <clears throat> yep. And you don't have to like figure out how you're going to get revenue or how you're going to tie the people who joined you because you made did woodworking and sell mm-hmm. them a my sequel course right like some of that stuff gets weird potentially over time mm-hmm. whereas like hey they like you people like you it's fun to watch you do whatever it is you're yes. doing you might be running like casey nice that his whole videos where he's just running like he just runs. i'm not into running but he i watch him run because that's what he's doing in this 10 minute episode right so and then at the end he sells me a nord vpm subscription right and that's like mm-hmm. the deal we've all made um so there might be other options like that. I don't know if your audience is big enough for a sufficient revenue yet, but maybe if that's the focus, you make the mm-hmm. audience big enough. That kind of thing. So maybe maybe that maybe that is maybe that is the real business model. Maybe the real business model is um maybe is this every business model? Monetizing <laughs> attention. I don't think that's big every business brain. model. Brain yeah. is getting huge. I think the real business model is monetizing mm. attention. And and right. Perhaps it is the height of conceit to say the real business model is follow Aaron Francis. Maybe that is the real business yeah. model. And we already get decent amounts of money from sponsorship slash advertising. So like that already yeah. exists. We're already right. doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, the courses make <laughs> up the biggest you know percentage of the revenue. But in terms of like uh, uh, 
dollars per <laughs> effort, dollars per unit of effort, uh, I think advertising is way easier. Sponsorship is way easier. And so that is another that is another thing we would get out of this like continued and varied exploration is exposure to a broader audience, bigger sponsorship numbers. And the whole thing just becomes kind of like a like a, a flywheel almost. Okay, so then here's what I, this, here we now, go. This, now we're talking. Exciting, yeah, yeah, hit now me, hit we're me. getting into it. See, Come now on. this is exciting. Okay, so you're making content. You're Aaron Francis. People yeah, yeah. like Aaron Francis, right? Okay. Open question, but yeah, let's let's so, operate as if that's true. Ev, you're now just putting our Gordon Gecko business hats mm-hmm. on here, mm-hmm. which you'll watch someday and understand. Oh, he's in the we second are, one. I've seen it. Yeah. He is in the second. Um, you're from the business perspective. Yep. You are making inventory, right? Okay. Advertising inventory is what yes. you are creating. Okay? Yes. Now, underneath that, yeah. it's just how you fill that inventory you have. Sometimes mm. it's with House your ads. own products, right? Sometimes it's your courses. Sometimes it's your handmade widgets. That's filling your advertising inventory and you're selling yep. through your channels. Other times it's other people's products that they put the effort into that you don't even have to think about. Yep. You don't have yep. to have anything to do with. You just stick their thing because they're paying you to stick their thing. Just like everybody's very comfortable with that idea. Yep. Which then kind of creates an interesting idea to me of like the try hard studios courses yeah and we've talked about this a little bit before but where Tell you me. are just not doing them anymore okay so you, somebody else does the courses now i think it's probably not even one person right but you, you've already talked about maybe pulling in some other people mm-hmm. but you start filling your ad inventory this is like a thing steve could be working on right this doesn't now even need all of your attention necessarily right, it's right, like right. lining up future courses um, that's a whole management process that you're probably overseeing as the course guru, but at the same time, Steve's very knowledgeable in that stuff too, and can do more of the day to day. So you have yep. the partnership aspect, your energy and focus goes into making advertising inventory, mm-hmm. and then you're back filling that with your own stuff, but also with other people's stuff. And that then is like a focus that it feels like if you're just going and trying stuff, doesn't have that same business focus, but now this has a business focus. Uh, we're building That's advertising. The business model. You're correct. Yes. That is it. Okay. That is like the that. business model. That I like that. I like that model. Okay. That's good. I model. like that too. I like that too. And <clears throat> that helps me. That helps clarify. Um that helps clarify that courses are an implementation of that business model, but not the only implementation. Yes. Right. Right. The business is advertising. That's the, the business. business you're in is advertising sometimes Sometimes, we sell our own products sometimes we sell other people's products but my job is to create a spectacle yes your job is to be interesting so dove can sell soap yes my job is to create a spectacle i think this is very clarifying like this is very clarifying you can now go off and do anything that's interesting yes right that makes total sense in this model you're mr beast right yes like I'm just going to pay somebody 10 grand to do something stupid. Or maybe Aaron will live in a industrial complex for a week and see what happens. Great. It's a great idea. All, right. Yeah. Any of it. But that idea of you're making advertising spaces and uh, you have to be interesting to do that. And that's what you, that's your part, your end of the deal. This is here. great. This and is then, great. Yeah. The business of try hard is maybe doing the other end of the deal, which is finding advertisers and or building products to, put in advertising basically this is perfect we've by the way we've just invented from whole cloth like <laughs> television basically <laughs> newspapers television <laughs> yeah. basically everything that exists yeah. is, is this we invented but it. we, we came to it yeah yeah YouTube. that's it that's the one that's it and so okay and so like when when people are like now i have an answer for when people are like why are you going to sanity hackathon Right. I just got to go create a spectacle. I got to, I got to, I got to <laughs> create some inventory. Why yeah. are you, why are you doing physical manufacturing? I mean, it's all part of business. Got to yeah. create a spectacle. Right. It's great. I love yes. it. You're entertaining people. That's what you're I'm doing. I'm entertaining people. Yes. 
just like, like you it. messaged you messaged me and you're like, hey, you're speaking at Laracon EU on a JavaScript thing? That seems weird. Nope. <laughs> it's all part of the business, baby. It's all in it's there, all baby. part of the business. He's a, he becomes a JavaScript developer one day. You don't know. Anything could happen. Anything could happen. And that that is that is what I'm optimizing for. Anything could happen. Yes. There is. I like it. I am uh, 100% not saying that this is the optimal business strategy. Not even, I don't even, mm. I don't think that, I'm not saying that. So when people, when people say to me like, oh, you could make more money, I'm just, yes, probably. Right. You're right, uh, probably. Yes and no. I don't know. I don't know if I even agree with that statement. I think that this is the optimal business strategy for you because yes. you don't like being tied down to one thing. Hate I it. feel like you have established this very well. Like you have some products you already tried to build that didn't work yep. out you've had things yep. you've done that have worked out but now you're kind of like maybe they get boring or you, don't, yep. you know for sure you don't want to do this you know for the next five years and have three courses a year and you're the face of every one of them and that kind of thing like you seem pretty sure that that's not what you want to do right so very sure so yeah i think that 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 this could be the optimal one because it's like it's like how we talked about a couple weeks ago where i was like HubSpot could have been Zendesk in this abstract theory. Right. But in reality, if I, in 2005, just said, yeah, I can host a bunch of servers and that's going to work. The reality is I would have just been out of business and I wouldn't have become Zendesk because I would have been out of business. And the same thing is kind of true here. Potentially, it's like, yeah, in theory, might you make more money if you were like super coarse guy and you just become super coarse guy? Maybe. But also, if you can't, can't actually execute that because you don't want to do it, yes. then it won't be <laughs> the best business exactly. model. Exactly. And also, I think certainly on the sort of high end, the, the advertising model is uncapped. I think there True. is a cap on courses. Like you're only going to be able to I sell agree. so many database courses. It could be yep. many millions of dollars, but it's still a cap to it. Whereas like on YouTube, anything's possible. Like you have no cap. Like you could yes. become Casey Neistat and have 10 million followers or Mr. Beast and have a hundred million followers. Like, right. It's unlikely, And I could right? literally make impossible. millions of dollars per video. Right. If, if, <laughs> that, if that came true, which I doubt, but yeah. Right. But I mean, it's possible it's and you're already, you know, you have something that people enjoy about you, right? And so it's like, obviously you could easily have half a million followers. I don't think that's yes. going to even be. I think that is true outside the realm of possibility at all. So, and even at that, you're going to be able to have reasonable ad sales. You're going to be right. able to do well with your own products into a market that size. Cause you already do with one that's a 10th the size. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that seems, I, I, I love this. See, Cause you've been ah, making see, me nervous. I've I know. Been nervous I've been making, for you. I've been making everybody Everybody's nervous. nervous. Everybody's, Everybody's nervous. nervous. But I do like this. I mean, I do think it's riskier in the short term, right? Because sure. like, Hey, if like, Live a little. You don't get the advertising, the balance, or the courses, you know, just course sell at that initial jump, but you're not able to, like, really keep it going. You know, there's short-term risk. But you could always come back. You could always double down on what you've already done. Like, it's not crazy risk. Like, you yes. could, there's, there's other options there. Um, yeah, you could do more courses if you had to do a, a run in back into 2025 of MySQL and ClickHouse or whatever. Like, right great you could do it like or you have somebody else do it or whatever yes, the case I've, is i have so. proven that i can grind it out if i have right. to yes. that, that much is true and without sharing without sharing full numbers we have been steve and i incredibly uh, encouraged by how well sqlite continues to sell great and so i think adding on postgres on top and then we have a few more we actually have two guest courses in in the hopper and so mm -hmm. like adding those under the umbrella, I think we'll continue that wheel turning. Yeah. And part of, I think part of my historic failings have been doing the spectacle thing, making it really cool and then being like, all right, well, that's, I'm done with that moving on. And so having, uh, having a structure and much of this includes, you know, Steve, Steve and Kelsey on kind of the back end to come back after my, my wake of destruction and be like, all right, <laughs> well now we need to like, now we need to support this course. We need to right. do ads. We need to get, you know, we need to do like yep. emails, having that sort of like uh, infrastructure backend of, of people continuing on after I've like gotten it from zero to one and like, what's next, baby. Right. Uh, that's, <laughs> I think that is, that is the thing that differentiates me historically from try hard now. That, that's my hope at least. Yeah, and I think it just makes clear your role, right? And it's like, what's the thing that's hard to do? Is the thing that's hard to do to get people 
to subscribe to things and follow somebody and believe in what they're saying and trust them and trust their product recommendations and things like that? Or is the hard thing to build a course about MySQL? And I think the hard thing is to get the followers and the distribution and the trust. Yeah. Like there's a lot of people who know MySQL. There's yeah. a lesser number who know MySQL and would be good on camera. So you have to filter through that. But there's still those people are out there. And what those and people can't do is make a course and then have distribution to sell into, which is the yes. where you come in. So and and frankly, I, I can still do both of those, but I cannot do respond to emails. I cannot do right. send out regular updates. I cannot buy ads. Like at that point, I'm like, man. Mm. I'm going to go, yeah. we'll just go not build good. out a factory and stuff. Right. You're not going <laughs> to do know? a good job with that. I'm yeah, not. That, that's I'm fine. just not. Yeah. And I right. think, uh, you know, I think I've at some point subscribed uh, that to myself as a moral failing of like, you should just be better at that. And maybe that's true. Who knows? But now, like, I have a role in the business. And that's not my role. Like, I don't right. have to be better at that, in fact. Right. Yes. I don't have to collect testimonials and put them on the website because right. we have a person that's very, very good at that. We yeah. have our Linda, whose name is Kelsey, yeah. <laughs> and she's just incredibly good at doing stuff. And I'm like, yeah. that was great because I would have let that sit for four yeah. weeks, you know? Yep. So yep. I think this is a good spot for me. Be, like the, be the guy out front, create some inventory. Dove will come in and sell some soap and we'll all get rich. Yeah, if you get that Dove contract, that's going to be something. can you imagine? That'd be great. <laughs> That'd be look great. how moisturized my face I know. looks. It's this Dove brand Dove, male moisturizer. Dove serum. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready. Dove, call me. I'm ready. Yes, do it. We got to get the spin drift people. We get the Dove people. I know. I think it's possible. I like it. Oh, I mean, okay, nobody so... watches television anymore. People are out there trying to advertise on YouTubers who have, you know, a reasonable following because... People aren't, that's where people are. So I know I'm the future. Sense. All right. Another business problem. Knocked that's out good, of the park. That was a good we're, card, right? What am I going to do with my life? That worked out great. <laughs> good, good prompt. Oof. Oh, geez. man. We're an hour and seven in. Are we going to talk about why you hate Elon or are we going to wrap Should it? Should we do that? No, I don't know. if you have time, we can talk about that. I've got time. What do I have okay. to do? Oh, first of all, before we do that, um, mm. Postgres launches tomorrow. So everybody yes. listening, please go please go help let's talk about that quick since we, we kind of touched that. on it but like let's talk let's about wrap that. that that end of things up so postgres yeah. is ready postgres um, is ready. just it's it, do you have a launch video is there a launch video what's your plan there? that's an open question um okay. i think steve is working on potentially working on that today um mm. we've got i think we have 97 videos for launch Holy which is cow. just absurd um, i wonder why you feel burned out on it yeah, I wonder what could what could be <laughs> the root cause there. Um, so I finished recording the last ones uh, on Friday, and mm. so that was good ahead of ahead of schedule. Well, a yep. few days behind schedule, but ahead of launch. So I'm not yep. like you know going to be up recording tonight, which would be insane. Right. Like you did last um, time. Okay. Like I did last. You're time. You're doing something last time anyway, right before. Yep. Um. So this weekend when the kids were asleep and then today just shoring up the actual website, making sure that all like the multi-tenancy stuff is, is correct. Cause now we're mm -hmm. running two courses that people can mm -hmm. buy access to. We got to make sure they get access to the right one and not the other yep. and you know, whatever, all that stuff. Yep. Um, so yeah, I feel, uh, very, I feel very proud of the content. I think it's very good. There's so much of it. And in fact, there's a lot more that is yet to be done. Um, mm -hmm. So we're doing the same kind of launch thing of early access. And then as we add modules, that gives us a reason to send emails. And then as we finish the course completely, that gives us a reason to say prices going up and stuff yeah. like that. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, it gives me an out to not like have to finish the last, you know, 30 or 40 videos right now. So yeah. it kind of works out. Um, but yeah, it's it's great. I think. I think the course is very, very good. Um, it was one that I was kind of nervous about because of its breadth and depth, but um, it turned out good and we're launching tomorrow. I'll probably do another live stream on Twitter because that worked super well last that. time. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, send it out to the email list and hopefully hopefully make a bunch of money. Otherwise, I'm not going to be doing any light manufacturing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, sounds good. I don't know. I guess they go smooth. It sounds like it, it seemed like it went pretty smooth once you got to recording that like. Yeah, it went pretty tricky. smooth. I have like, I don't know. 
is some sort of like mental thing where I'm either I'm either just like absolutely struggling to record or I'm in goblin mode and I'm knocking out 10 mm. videos in a day. Yeah. But there's this whole emotional roller coaster of like, I can't do this. Who am I? I'm not going to. And then I can't start. And then it's like two 30 in the afternoon. I'm like, I got to start recording videos. And, yeah. and then it's, it's just like, it's, it's uh, I wish uh, I do not wish rough. it upon anyone, but yeah it's, yeah, it's pretty rough. Especially when you have the time deadline. Cause it's like, you know, yes, it's just you that you really have to do it. That's one thing that we have agreed on. Steve and I, we're never going to announce a course until it's like 80 percent done next yeah. time yeah just have it like in the can pretty yes. much and like yeah then you can do two months of the lead up or whatever and just know yes. it's just marketing time and not uh, all that stuff yeah what a what a mess but you yeah. know live live and learn we came out of the gate yep. we came out of the gate strong and maybe it was necessary just for from a revenue perspective um yeah but we, i don't think we will we'll never run them this tight again and i doubt we'll uh even run two in a year that i produce that i teach right but we'll see yeah yeah no and you were i mean it was you have to always remember that like you were kind of capitalizing on a specific moment like you got laid off exactly became a big thing like you had some opportunities like so you gotta kind of take those opportunities when they come there's no guarantee that if you waited two more months at that point that yep. the sponsors you've gotten would be wanting to do it still or all those things so for the first year yep. i think it made sense to crush your soul and Mm -hmm. get it done but uh yeah i think tweaking the uh process for the future definitely makes to a lot be, of sense, to be so. less soul crushing yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's probably good no I, I think you're absolutely right that was a moment that i think we fortunately identified we identified that we were in a moment um yeah. which is not always possible and no. sometimes often missed um yeah, we identified sure. we were in a moment we capitalized on the moment and then we worked like hell to to fulfill what we said we were going to do. Um, and I don't know if I would change anything. We won't do it again this way, but I don't know if I would yeah. change anything because I think uh, you're right that we, the, the wave could have passed us if we didn't paddle quite as hard as we did. And so we yep. did, here we are. Yeah. I mean, moments are really hard to get, like just, you can't manufacture them. No. They just appear and you kind of have to take advantage of that moment. Dude, so I think that's yes. a good move. Man. But now it's time yeah. to be a little more, a little more chill, chill. A little more chill. Five is year of chill. It's the year of chill. It's the year of systems and processes to like make the back end even more profitable, and then hopefully expand the top of funnel with interesting spectacles. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like you have an inventory of products now that like getting even. I mean. Kelsey seems good at it, so maybe that's even enough. But even if you needed more people over time to like, who, there's tons of people out there who like that. That's what they like, and that's what they're good at. And they're like, yep. "Great, we have all this stuff that's awesome to sell. Let me like build the marketing, yep, you know, steps that do that, and the automation, and all the stuff, and Facebook ads or whatever. Who knows? There's all those things that are probably would work good for some of these things. I would think um, and be profitable. It's like you just have to have the people to do it, and you're just not." that person so that yep. can all be that's just like a cost equation of you know if i hire someone and they cost x and they can sell y then as long as that's positive it's like great just get out great. there and sell stuff so yeah i think yep. that, that could be something for the coming year too so yep cool man uh yeah so let's cover this other thing quick because lots of people on the internet wanted us to talk about this um, yeah because this is an unbelievably historic bad ian oh, take come it's, on. it's historic all right give us give us give us the take all right so spacex launched some big rocket thing that went up into no, the air you're like minimizing thousands already. of other rockets have done and it landed itself which again hundreds of other rockets have done and then apparently the difference with this one is that two arms came out and caught it in the spot where it was they knew it was going to land and it did land because they've done it a hundred times before and then they, they caught it and it's cool and it's fine but i just don't think it's that big a deal everybody's like freaking out like this is changing the world like your life is not any different because of this rocket being caught okay. by the arms big arms big arms <laughs> <laughs> okay all right here we go yeah. um this has never been done before so yeah i guess the, the rockets the rockets that have landed so much smaller so much smaller and so they have they have launched and landed rockets, and it should be noted that that is so commonplace now 
because they were the ones that did it. They did. And, they did. And they they failed, you know, however many times, right. 10 times. And it was like, last one, hope it works. And it worked. And now it's like, ah, oh, yeah, right. of course rockets land themselves. Of right. course they do. Exactly. But that, that never, that <laughs> never happened in the history of the universe. No, in the history we don't know of the about world. That, but, we don't know what else yeah. is out there. Because we haven't <laughs> left yet. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So that's never happened. Okay. Then they made well, it commonplace, right? Right. Right. And so now the biggest rocket in the history of humanity that has left the earth is now mm. coming back to the earth and being caught. And you're like, ah, eh, it's just kind of commonplace. This is the biggest, it's like 40 stories tall or something Big insane sucker. like that. Yeah. And it brings down the cost of, you know, kilogram to orbit from like, I think they already brought it down from like fifty thousand uh, dollars to like two thousand, and Starship right. Heavy brings it down to like two hundred. Right. Yeah, that's cool. It's cool. Okay, so here's <laughs> here's here's the other here's the other thing here's yeah. the other thing I I, I take umbrage with in okay. your uh, in your tweets was mm -hmm. um, something like, oh, this isn't exciting. We can't really do anything with the current tech that's like that exciting. Right. right. So think right? about that. That was the right. point. That was the well, point. The point, right? the point was that we don't do cool things like we already did the go to the moon, which was the cool thing. That was like okay. the inspiring humans have looked at the moon for millions it's of awesome. years and like now we got there. That's amazing. Right. So now we have to pretend this is as amazing as that. Like people are like cheering and losing their minds as if like this was equivalent even to that. And it's not, it's not, it's not equivalent at all. It's, we've already had the inspiring moment. The, here's the example. The first thing you go to is the cost per kilogram of weight of the shit sent to space. That's not Which, inspiring and exciting. Like it's it cool is. from a business thing. I love it. If we're having just a business conversation, I think we're this not. is great. We're having a, we're having a humanity sense. conversation. Yeah, it's not interesting in a humanity conversation. When did anybody it ever talk is. about the price of something as interesting in a humanity conversation? It's just not. Because the People cheaper, the like cheaper it costs to get to space, sure. the more stuff goes to space. Yeah, that's all right. But again, we want that's stuff, just, we want stuff like in space. SpaceX making money, which is cool. I'm all about no, no, that. No, no, no. We want, we want stuff in space. And here's the thing. Here's, yeah. here's the thing I was, here's the thing I was going to complain about your yes. complaint about Give it to me. the current technology. <laughs> Where okay. do you think the new technology comes from? Yeah. Stuff like this. This is sure. the new technology. It's like this is um, uh -huh. like the first time that what's his name? John Glenn orbit the earth, orbited the earth or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like that's not the moon, but that was pretty cool. Right. Yeah. And the first time that the space shuttle, like they launched it off, you know, whatever a rocket. And then it lands on a runway and they're like, no, nope. wow, that's super cool. It like, was cool. It was cool. And this is that because this is like in, in terms of, you know, the tech tree, this is unlocking all of the things that come next, which is like, let's go build some stuff on the moon. Let's take some robots to the moon and build some on stuff. On the moon? What a yeah. waste of time. Let's go make some time. medicine. Let's go make some medicine on the moon. bigger waste of time than building See, stuff on the moon? This. this is this is Such all. Such a waste of time. This is this is all. You're playing a character. You're playing no, a I'm character not. of Ian. This is really Ian the not. character. This there's is no point in going to the moon. There's literally there's no, no point. super points we were going there. to the moon. Guess what? There's nothing stuff. there. There's of nothing course there. not, because we haven't brought anything to the moon no, yet. Because it's too expensive. Bring stuff to the moon's insane. Why would we, we bring until stuff we to the moon? Until we have Starship Heavy, but there's we can nothing bring all there. kinds of stuff. There's nothing there. I know. That's why if it's a perfect place to do crazy stuff. By definition, that's the stuff that's already here. No, no, no. There's nothing there. This is unbelievable. Listen, we I'm want for, we uh, want manufacturing. We want we want medicine production. We want these cool things happening in outer space. I don't think that we don't know that that's true. No, there is no medicine made in outer space right now. They yes, found there is. something that's like this only works yes, in space. Yes, there is. No, they, yes, there is. Give me, give me in what orbit. medicine is that? In orbit, they I'm not are saying making. They've never tried it. I'm saying they haven't there's a company produced that's anything. Doing that's, it right. Yeah, yes, they, they are. Proven that it does. It's anything different and does something. That's my point to you. But it also, is, even if that is true. Which is, I'm all for that. That's great. First of all, that would be an actual use. Second of all, you don't have to do it on the moon. Like, you could do it 50 miles up in low Earth orbit. And how are they getting 50 miles up? They're going to take a rocket. Rockets. Which is great. That's, That's fine. I'm all for the rockets. That's what I'm saying. I'm not against rockets and I'm not against space. I'm against stupid stuff like building a base on the moon that you're going to send people to Mars. And all that is dumb because there's nothing no. there. No, you know what's there. You're, you you're can telling look at the stream you're... right now of what's on Mars. 
There's You're telling the fish, there. don't nothing. go on the land. That's stupid. Don't go on the land. Why would you go on the land? We've There's got no water land. over here. Yes, exactly. It's, it's, water I, it's unbelievable. The fish starts walking and Ian's like, don't do it. There's it's a no trap. Walking. There's nothing out there. It is there. a trap. No. There's nothing out there. There's I know. nothing out there. Here's my biggest beef. Here's my okay. number one beef. Is that Tell me the beef. All the money that SpaceX is going to trick us into spending as a society. Who? Okay. Who? The, the U.S. taxpayer. Okay. Yes. If this whole scam that Elon's running, that we're going to okay. be on Mars in three years, three years, they have no idea how to do any of this, right? And even if they could, there's no reason to do it. But let's just say they can, could figure it out. It's not going to happen in three years, right? Manifest destiny is the reason to do it. So <laughs> those people were going somewhere where they knew where they were going. But anyway. No, they didn't. So uh, Yes, they did. They knew that when they get there, there'd be water. So... All that wasted money is just a scam on the taxpayer. It's just a straight scam. Have, straight this is, scam. This is because there's shocking nothing on Mars me. that you can't do here or on, on, in the worst case, on the moon, but probably just in low Earth orbit. Which, if we're all worried about the cost per kilogram, the cost per kilogram of going to low Earth or- orbit has to be exponentially less than sending it to Mars, right? Especially so, when you're taking Starship you Heavy. Yeah, it's cheap. Right, great. It's cheap. I'm all for Starship Heavy. I'm all for loading junk into space. I'm sure there won't be any problems here's, with here's low thing, Earth orbit with junk. But, here's the thing you're missing. Yes. What? The, Give it to me. I want to finally be wrong the, about the this. The big vision of like, let's get people to Mars. Mm-hmm. That drums In three years. up. Well, who cares? That drums <laughs> That's up. That's important. No, yes. it's not. He's going to miss Three the timeline. Years. He's going to miss the timeline by a decade. 900 days from now. He's going to miss the timeline by two course, decades. Yes. It may never by happen. But here's the thing. Hundreds of years. Yes. Here's the thing. Mm-hmm. It energizes It energizes the industrial base to say, let's build a but mother freaking – To get someone to low or orbit. Now you're getting it. See, you're fine. So, no, no, no. Listen. It's just a scam. It's not a scam. To make Elon money. That part is just no, a scam for Elon. Yes. No, you just said it. You literally just said it. Here's yeah. what I said. I said yes. the big vision of getting people uh, to Mars. Sure. The lie. In, what you're saying sure. is a lie. If it's not going to be hundreds of years sure. from now, the lie. Sure. Yes, continue. I, we can hold it constant that it may not happen in three years. Sure. We can it hold that not. as a constant. Uh-huh. So the big vision of getting people to Mars mm-hmm. has all these downstream effects that energize the not industrial – what where did Starship research it. come from? No, research it. There's actually not that much. We could send a guy to Mars right now today. Like the but technology where, exists to do it. Where you don't, need, why? you don't need Starship Heavy to send a person to Mars. That's a right. known thing. We could do it we, right now. We need Starship Heavy to get all the stuff there. Not just to send a person. If we just want to send right. a person to plan a flag go and, and die come back, because there's nothing there, Ian. There's nothing there. That's even what the, I'm saying. Even to send them back. If we want them to walk around like Neil Armstrong style and walk around for a day and come back, we don't need okay. any new technology. The technology yes, all exists. Yes, I agree. But you're missing okay. the point. You're missing the point. That is the point. No, no. Here's the point. My <laughs> point, is, point is Elon Musk says we're going to go to Mars and we're going to have a base. We're going to have sure. all this stuff, right? Uh, uh, and right. so the technology to send a human there is already there. Who cares? Whatever. But the technology to go build a bunch of bases – that doesn't exist. I mean, that's mostly there too. What's not no, there is maybe the ability too... to send all the stuff that we already know how to build, which is where he comes in, right? That's the scam part. That's let the me, scam let part. Me finish, let we me need finish, bases on let Mars. Me Why? Finish the Why? Reason. Let me finish the thing okay. you're missing. Give it to me. You are saying that his vision is stupid. I am making a right. null argument on that. Do not okay. care. Okay. Null. Don't right. care. We can leave okay. that alone. His okay. vision is we need to build bases on Mars. Don't freaking okay. care. All right. Moving down from that, how are we going to build bases mm. on Mars? Well, we got to get a lot of stuff into space, and right. it can't cost it can't cost billions and billions and trillions well, it of dollars. It will. Just let me finish. Let me finish. Let, right. me finish. let me finish. Let me finish. You're you're being mm. you're being a you're being an interrupty guy. We um, know an interrupty. I, I know. Guy. I don't, don't like be an interrupty. Guys. Don't be an interrupty like guy. It. Look at what you're making so, me do. It's all your fault. Uh, it's not my fault. So. <laughs> The vision yes. is is moot. Doesn't matter. Yeah. We can agree or disagree. The point is to accomplish his vision, mm. which maybe is stupid. We mm-hmm. have to get a huge amount of mass into outer space. Okay. True. How do we get a huge amount of mass into outer space? Well, we can launch some rockets and land them, and that cuts the cost down by a ton. So we can mm-hmm. launch and land over and over and over. 
All right, okay. how do we cut it down again? We make bigger rockets. Okay. That's awesome. Let's yeah. make bigger rockets. Well, sure. the bigger rockets, for whatever reason, I'm not a rocket scientist, don't have legs, they can't land themselves. So okay. we make Starship Heavy and we catch it out of the freaking sky. We mm -hmm. catch it on these two tiny little hooks somehow. Mm -hmm. And so that's the way that we're gonna get all the stuff to Mars. Now, will it ever be used to get stuff to Mars? I have no freaking idea. I don't know. But what I do know mm. is that Starship Heavy, a reusable biggest rocket that has ever existed, would not mm -hmm. have come to fruition without this vision of like, we're going to Mars. Agree or disagree? I, I disagree even with that. I don't think that's How? true. How? I think there's tremendous demand from governments and commercial organizations to send stuff into space for satellites, where, for research. That's where, where it is. Where are that all of the government launches? But the government has been the only ones launching for all of his, human history up until like right, five and they years ago. Sucked at it. That's fine. They've they launched, can't do it. They've launched basically nothing into space. It. I would say they are not optimized to do it at a, at a low cost, right? That's not what how government operates. This kind of thing, right? So they have launched fine. shockingly little <laughs> into outer space compared to compared to SpaceX. Shockingly okay. little. Well, I mean, first of all, SpaceX has done all what they've done without Starship Heavy, right? But also, right. so imagine, yeah, so there'll be more satellites. I don't disagree with any of that. There will be more satellites. There will be space ish stations, space ish manufacturing mm -hmm, things. Mm -hmm, I'm fine mm -hmm. with all that. And I think it's great. And awesome. that's all great for the future of humanity. I don't think that's Mars has anything to do with it. I don't care. I don't think yeah. where we are right now has anything to do with Mars at all. I don't think the government's put a bunch of money into SpaceX because they think they're going to Mars with it. I think it's because they want the launch capacity for their own things, yes. their own reasons and commercial reasons. And that's what's happening. That's where I think the heavy push from Mars, right? It's about there's a certain amount of government funding and just commercial funding that have come in over the past decade or two, right? So that we can have more launch capacity. These mm -hmm. are commercial pressures that arose and that SpaceX is attempting to satisfy along with others, right? And that's naturally happened as part of commerce. What this, the next level though, right, is if you want to get trillions and trillions of dollars, there is not a commercial need for that. So now you have to invent the reason for trillions of dollars to go into your pocket. And that is what Mars is, right? Like nobody's going, again, I don't, I'm not denying that you could strap a guy to a rocket and send him there and send him back. Absolutely. I think you could do it tomorrow, right? But this vision of a base and we're going to be planting stuff, I guess, on the dead Martian surface or whatever's going to happen. Probably. That's all fairy tale land stuff to spend trillions of dollars that come into SpaceX. That's what that I don't, is. I don't it's think all made the government up. is funding. I don't think the government is funding a mission to Mars. I, I mean, even the government, government has talked about that. That's on their roadmap. That's, that's, that's why they have they're, this they're moon talking trip about it. and they're all that stuff. They're talking about it. Right. But if, if the government is spending money... I mean, Elon literally have... says that the other day. He was like, if, if Trump doesn't win, we won't be able to go to Mars. That's like literally what he says. That's his, that, what he that, talks that's about. That's fine. But what I'm talking about is things that right. are real. If the government is... I know. Is, that's what I'm talking if, about. If the, <laughs> if the government is spending money for SpaceX to put stuff in outer space, that is not... Mm -hmm. I have no problem with that because SpaceX is going right. to do it cheaper. They do. And so my... That's great. So my taxpayer right. dollars are being utilized I'm fine more with effectively by I don't have any problem space. with that. Launch a so spy the, satellite, launch something to the space station, all good. Your only problem is that he says he wants to go to Mars. Well, I don't think that's my only problem. I think that, first of all, my commentary was about everybody's so excited because they're like, we're going to Mars. And I don't think you're going to Mars, first of all. And then, yes, it's just a grift on the taxpayer, right? Like, how do we spend trillions of dollars not, on this? The not paying anything. That's the of thing course, I don't that's understand. The, whole point. No, the taxpayer's that's, not paying anything except for services to put stuff in outer that. space. No. What is the taxpayer paying for if not if not the ability to put stuff into outer space? This base base on Mars is a U.S. government funded operation in According the mind to of Elon Musk. What? Well, yes, but that is right. not real. That, well, I agree. But that's, that's my point. So why are we talking about it? It's not real. You're okay, saying he wants it to be funded. This is what people are and... arguing with me about, right? We're going to Mars. The super heavy is the way to Mars and all this stuff. That's my. That's the part I'm pushing it back on. And then the only other part was that I don't think it's that. I think it's cool, but I don't think it's like I'm not jumping up and down because they've already landed the rockets back on Earth. I think they already landed a starship back on Earth. 
they just didn't catch it with the hooks, right? Or didn't they land it into the ocean, but it was like vertical or whatever? I don't know. I don't think they've landed a starship heavy maybe on anything. I thought they had at least had it come back down, but maybe they definitely didn't catch it, obviously. But uh, okay, and they catch it, and that's a cool twist, and I dig it. Okay, like, it's cool. I wouldn't, I'm not surprised that, like, if I can land a rocket in the same spot every time, I'm not surprised that I can then catch it, because I know where it's going to be. That's yeah, I don't think this one's whole ever point. been landed, though. That's kind of the whole point. It's like, okay. this but is I mean, new they landed novel. the other rockets. It's just a bigger rocket of the thing they already did. That's not uh, surprising. It seems reductive. It's not I think surprising. My, my, I think my, the thing that I'm totally confused about is you're saying yeah. the taxpayers funding a trip to Mars, and I say, right. no, they're not. And you say, yeah, you're right. It's made up. And so, like, what? No, that's the whole point. Go, go f- read into this two seconds. They're like, the government needs to fund this. To go to Mars. Okay, so that's the whole point. What you're saying is that you don't want the taxpayer in the future to fund it. And what I'm saying is right. the taxpayers is not giving any funding to a trip to Mars. Well, I and you're saying I don't want true. them. That is true. No, it's not true. They're not, Even they're NASA's not giving trying any to go to Mars. NASA's trying to oh, go to okay, Mars. Well, that's, that's your that's team. One I don't thing, care about that. Right? Yeah. SpaceX is trying to make the pitch that they want to go to Mars, right? And that you should pay them lots of money to do that. Mostly it's just, yes, I think that the Mars thing is all completely fake so that money goes into SpaceX, right? Like, this is the idea. Elon's the okay, one with the vision, find, and we're going to save humanity find, and all the bullshit, right? If you find uh, some evidence, which may exist, that the government is giving SpaceX money just purely speculatively to fund, uh, like, a Martian base... That's a no, different, that's like, we, the we can talk. That Elon's making. That I understand. That is the literal pitch. I that's understand. the pitch. What I, yeah. But what I'm saying to you, yes. mm-hmm. I, I'm acknowledging that okay. that is the pitch. Okay. I, I, we agree. That's my that point. is the pitch. Okay. What I am saying, backing up, is mm. that hasn't happened. Of course. The taxpayer, so, like, the taxpayer is not giving money towards Mars, towards SpaceX going to Mars. Do we agree on that? Uh, I think that in general, in terms of where, what we're talking about, yes. Like they haven't dropped a trillion dollars on them yet and said, go to Mars. Yes. So anything that the U.S. government is paying SpaceX for is services, which would be launching right. things into outer space, right? Yes. That, okay, I mean, so I think there has been some other money besides that. But generally, yes. It's for things to assist in doing stuff we actually need that is actually useful today. Right. And so your, your problem is a future potential problem. Your yeah. problem, your problem part is of my problem. we yeah. might end up giving Elon taxpayer money. That's well, it's your not problem. about Elon, right? It's not or this SpaceX. Isn't even about we Elon might, we or might SpaceX. End up... It's about the idea of anybody being like, we can go to Mars and this is a good idea. Give me four trillion dollars to do it. I think that that's dumb. That we shouldn't spend four that's, trillion dollars that way when we fine. want to have a lot of stuff here. We can argue about not a, a lot of future things that are dumb sure. that don't that aren't that are, that don't but see, exist. It all layers in, right? Because if you have people who are super excited, like a lot of people, apparently according to Twitter, who are you know on my butt, that yep. they're very excited that we're going to Mars, right? That people believe this because Elon and others say it, but it's not real. So you're saying it doesn't matter that it's, it's not real, and you agree, and so it doesn't matter. Things that aren't real do I, matter in the real I world. I do if believe, believe that we that. are going to Mars. I do believe <laughs> we're going to Mars. What I said yeah. is it's a moot point. Okay. Well, then I, yeah, I disagree with that then because I think we're not going to Mars. Again, other than like you could throw a dude out there and have him come back. Mm-hmm. Fine, you might do that. Mm-hmm. But we're not living on Mars anytime in our lifetime. And, and, and my, so, my point is yeah. – uh, so holding aside what I believe about Mars, which is that a human will end up there and there will be a bunch of, you know, we'll, we'll make a base there eventually and who knows okay. what we'll do, but it'll be awesome, right? So <laughs> holding that aside, I think we would not be unlocking these, uh, these tech tree advances without a big vision, right? So if you want people, uh, who is it? Let, let's look it up. Let's look up the actual one. Um, if you want to build a ship... I think it's Antoine's is super. Yeah, here we go. I don't think these are the big unlocks you think they are. Here, they already got I the think big they unlocks. Are. They already did what, the big unlocks. Where do you think those came from? Here's here's the yes, quote. Yes, but that's a, if they you already want, exist now. If you want to build a ship, don't drum up the men to gather wood, divide the work, and give orders. Instead, teach them to yearn for the vast and endless sea. 
Yes. That I is what I'm that. talking that's about. That's the manipulation that's, what I'm talking that's going about. on. I agree. That is not, that is the inspiration that you <clears throat> could do something great. And to do that, we have to have a million inventions. So let's get to work. That is what's happening. But that's not true. Almost none of that is true in this case. That's the problem. We already have invented the things that need to be invented to do it. They exist. <laughs> They do we've exist. Fun, we've reached a fun. They Starship exist. Heavy did not exist until he invented it. He didn't invent That's, big rockets. Well, until they it's invented not even, it. It's just, I don't even know if it's bigger than a Saturn V or it's like slightly bigger oh than a Saturn goodness. V. Like, he didn't invent big rockets. We've had big rockets. Like, this is not like, the, yes, a bigger rocket. And we could probably have a bigger one after that. Like, more engines, more fuel. It's not like that crazy we got it we know how it to do is. it this is my point we, we invented don't. this that's already the thing. no that's <laughs> the thing is we we've been don't. doing it for 70 years we know how we to have it it's in the space yes we, we haven't do. been doing it not like this that's the thing that's fine this is making it cheaper for commercial use i agree with that that's fine okay i think we've reached i think we've reached an impasse i don't think <laughs> i don't think we're getting to where <clears throat> anybody's going to be happy here's the thing every i would encourage everybody to actually go real everybody's like mars it's cool we'll have a base there like go literally read like there's a cool book i read i forget the name of it it's like city on mars or something there's a lot of information about this it's it's basically impossible okay like because you need the, there's nothing there we need there's no magnetic shielding. You're just going to get cancer in Correct. a day. Like, I agree with all of all that. There's all kinds of stuff that makes it very hard to impossible to live there. Now, again, we have the technology. Could we, for infinite money, do it? Build a base, and we live underground, and there's 500 humans there living underground for $10 trillion? Absolutely. I totally think we could do that. I think we could do it today if we just wanted to send... Again, you don't even need the reusable part. It's like, great, we're shooting a thousand rockets up in the space. We know how to do that. And we're shipping the stuff to Mars. And when the guys get there, they're going to dig a hole and they're going to go live in it. Fine. Yep. We could absolutely do that. But there's no point in doing that. That's the problem. And we're going to ship water to them. And we're going to ship food to them forever, which this is not like a colony, right? This is just a dependent thing that as soon as something goes wrong or the budget gets cuts on Earth, they're just all dead. So that's not a self-sustaining second human civilization. And it Just never will be with that attitude. It never, never will be. be. It's I, also Starship is bigger than Saturn V. Just okay, FYI. Fine. Great. There you go. It's a little bit bigger than Saturn V. Fine. Awesome. And that's we could awesome. probably build a bigger one than that, right? We could probably strap three of those together. We have an even bigger rocket. Cool. That'd be awesome. That's awesome. People watch too many movies, man. See, too no, many video you're, games. No, you're, you're too jaded. That's the problem. I'm not jaded. There's you're just jaded. nothing out there, man. There is nothing out there. There's nothing There's nothing on Mars. I agree with that. So this is my other beef. If, let's just cover this one beef very quickly, which okay. is we're going to spend, if we get tricked into spending all this money, and see, this is the thing. I'm all about spending money on space. I would love to spend loads of money on space, but let's just do real shit that's smart. Send a bunch of, we haven't even been, we've lit, I just looked this up yesterday. We've been to, I think it's eight other planetary bodies in the solar system. Eight. That's all we've been to in any form. And most of them were like a lander. It survived 90 minutes and then it died. Mm -hmm. Why don't we check every moon, every planet, all these things? We literally haven't sent anything to any of these places. Why don't we spend 1,000 of the we, money on that? And how are we getting there? That's the thing. We already have That's sent the saying. probes. There's nothing. We were sending the probes. All these probes that happened happened in the 70s. Russia sent two probes to Venus in the 70s. So, like, so, we have this ability already. We just don't do it. Let me, let, me, let me walk down this scenario for you. Yes. Elon Musk is insane. He's Agreed. got... He has no brain in his head. He's operating purely on instinct and Adderall. Okay. He's insane. definitely in the current era. That's true. Okay. No, this is, yeah. this is just a hypothetical. Right. He's, he's a madman. He's drumming up all these people to believe that we're going to Mars. Right. As a result, he starts, he starts a rocket company because he's yeah. like, uh, we got to be interplanetary because I'm an alien and I need to go back to my people. Right. right? And we're right. like, wow, right. you're crazy. So yeah. he starts this rocket company. In the middle of starting the rocket company, he's like, oh, we need some more money. Let's do space internet. And so he makes, he makes Starlink a thing, right? So sure. now Starlink is just printing billions and billions and billions <clears throat> of dollars. He's, he's still like, oh, we got to go to Mars. The U.S. government's like, this dude's never going to Mars. And so he keeps building rockets. For the first time in human history, rockets start landing themselves. And the U.S. government's okay. like, this this guy's never going to Mars, but hey, mm -hmm. at least we can take his rockets up into the air for cheaper, sure. right? Mm -hmm. 
And then Elon Musk is like, yeah, we're going to Mars. And he builds Starship Heavy to get a bunch of manufacturing equipment to Mars because he's an idiot, right? Okay. And the U.S. government looks at him as like, you're an idiot. And then they listen. The U.S. government listens to mostly technical podcasts. Okay. And they hear Ian say, we should send probes. Right. And they're like, yeah, that's a good idea. Uh-huh. Wow, we can't, uh, we can't spend too much money on it. How do we get our probes into space? I wonder if we could use Starship Heavy. Let's use that insane person's uh-huh. Starship Heavy. He thinks he's going to Mars. Isn't that adorable? Sure. While he's doing that, let's send probes to every moon like Ian Landsman mm-hmm. wants. And we'll use Starship Heavy. And that way, the taxpayer doesn't have to pay a trillion dollars. They can just pay a billion dollars. Sure. That's not bad. I like that. That would be cool. That's good. That's what I'm talking yes. about. But see, that's unfortunately not how it works, right? Because that, there's no political will to send the probes. That's the political an entirely will is question. Gearing, no, it's not. It's the same question. Because if all the political will is towards Mars, then there is no political will. Obviously, there's no political will. Because, again, we don't need Starship Heavy for any of this. We've been sending probes since the 60s, since the 70s, right? So the Starship Heavy is irrelevant. Like, there's no political, political will political to will send Political will comes it. at a price. Is there a political will at a trillion dollars? No. Is there one but at $1,000? Why not? probes in 1972. So... And then it became cost prohibitive, and we're like, we, we're not no, discovering anything. I yeah, don't think so. It's, it's the, not about it, cost. It's not that it much money to send cost. a probe. It's nothing compared to going a human to Mars. It's tiny, tiny I agree. fraction. I okay, agree. We're we missing go. each other. We're missing each other. The, the, listener, will vindicate, the listener will vindicate and me. They'll say, here's they'll the say Aaron, you're, you're right on this one. Maybe there's water on Titan, right? Let's just say there's no, water. No, don't care. An ice. Exactly. That's what everybody's attitude is now because everybody's on Mars. That's exactly my point. Whereas no. if there's water sitting around on Titan, let's just say I'm making it up, we should be going to Titan. Everything Great. works around water. Let, let a thousand Why don't we spaceships do bloom. How exciting That's would that I'm be? Saying. But it's nothing that, with the spaceship. You have to know where everything. you're going. Yes, you have to get into spaceship. outer space. You we're have in to get outer, outer space. space. He's not invented okay. going to outer space. We've been going to outer space for 70 years, man. We know how to go to outer space. We know how to go to it. We know how to know. send things to all these planets. Down, we know how to I think do it's it. coming down to... Uh, and econo- you're, you don't understand economics, Ian. I do. I you totally don't. understand. You don't. If, if it you costs, think that the reason we haven't a sent a probe dollars, to a moon is because of economics, you are not correct. I do think that, that is the reason. I disagree. Okay. But I hopefully, listen, I hopefully Elon says, listen, as part of this, we're going to launch uh, the probes now are 50 bucks each and we're launching loads of probes and it's going to be awesome. That would be fantastic. I hope yep. he does that. He's never yep. saying anything like that. Nobody says anything like that because everybody's they, focused on Mars that and is moon their bases, business. which is even more crazy than Mars. Their business is but, renting fine. space to orbit. That is what sure. they do. And okay. so it's not up to him to be like, I should send a probe to Titan. It's somebody that says, exactly. hey, we should send a probe to Titan. Whose rocket are we going to use? That's called political will. Who, does, who sends the probes to Titan? Governments. Right. So that is political will. So who has the political will and where is it? sent it's not like let's do science and discover all the places that might be good for humans it's uh mars is red people have seen movies about mars that's really cool maybe there'll be two alien things stuff there true. we can use two That'd things be can awesome. be true Ian. schwarzenegger might be there right now if we just this look on the other side like that's that's the level we're dealing with here like that's the this is crazy mars they think the guy's gonna get on starship heavy or whatever this thing is called and fly to mars in two years from now that's what people believe it's crazy and just like people believe they're gonna take elon's gold taxi into his van into the starship heavy into mars like that's just you don't do the taxis don't drive into the vans you get into (laughs) one or the other and they go go underground into the boring tunnel tunnels and you can drive all over the the city this is crazy you're missing you're missing it i'm looking forward to the the hate people will chime in yeah give me your hate I need the people to tell me that Ian is fundamentally <laughs> missing the point. That's what I need. Oh, boy. All right. We'll leave it there. Yeah, that was a good Message quick, me uh, 40 on minutes Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> we, we Luckily, we solved that one. Um, yeah. But follow us over on MostlyTechnical.com, MostlyTechPod. Send me your hate there. And MostlyTechnicalPodcast at gmail.com. And we will see you next week. All right, See man. Ya. Later. Bye. Bye.